Hello everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to Google Cloud Community Day 2023. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very proud to present a talk before you. So let's start. So uh, giving you a brief about myself, myself Sanket Bisne. I'm working as a cloud engineer at Sears. I'm also 3x certified in DevOps, cloud architect and associate cloud engineer certifications. And also I'm a Google Cloud champion innovator in the category of modern architecture. You can follow me on Medium, you can follow me on Twitter or the most I'm very active on LinkedIn, so you can connect all there. Okay. So the topic will be customized with GCP. We will be seeing why customize is used, what are the best use cases of it, how we use customize in our day to day life, why customize came into picture, what are the alternatives of customize and whole bunch of things related to customize. Okay. So let's start. So the agenda of this talk is basically first we will be seeing introduction to customize. What problem does it solve? Use cases of customize, why uh, customize is used in our day to day life. And then we'll be comparing customize with Helm, why Helm and why we use customize. Okay. And at the end of the day, we'll be taking a QA session. Okay. So let's start. So customize, as you can see from the screen, it is uh, been depicted that it is a KS configuration management tool. Okay. So customize is only used for Kubernetes kind of thing. Okay. So let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster. Okay. And you have to manage some configuration. Let's say you have different, different environment, just like dev, prod and stage. Okay. So you have to uh, basically uh, deploy it's the same yaml files to different different cluster or some different different environments okay so that's why basically uh, customize is a major just a giving a thousand foot feet overview what customize does okay so just a configuration management tool okay so yeah so basically we going forward now okay. so introduction to customize okay as as this is title say untemperedize everything so what a template means Template is just like a reusable thing. Let's say you have a, a code written and you have to just reuse that code multiple times. Okay. In different, different environments, just like stage prod or some other environment, just like uh, QA or something right? so you have to, you, you, you will, you will be just writing a template first and you will be reusing the template again and again. Right. So, uh, so, so customize is used for just un untemplate as everything. So we will just seeing, we will just see in that. So uh, customize is a tool that allows user to easily customize and manage Kubernetes configuration. Then it is built by Google and the Kubernetes community. Now it is, it provides template free structure for your complete uh, infrastructure. Okay. So customize is particularly useful for creating different variation of base configuration for different, different environments. Just I have talked previously, it is development, staging and production environments. Okay. So what problems does customize solve? Okay. So the first thing is complexity. Okay. We don't need to learn any templating language to maintain our configuration. So basically, uh, whenever you see any Helm configuration, it is very, very complex. Whenever a new person is in, in whenever new person dives into Kubernetes. Okay. So let's say he, he have to just, he, he just learned Kubernetes and he want to just go for further, right? After Kubernetes. So there's, we can, there's a concept of Helm. Either you can go with customize or different, different uh, tools are there. Okay. So basically, whenever you see Helm configuration, there is a values.yaml file, charge.yaml. So you have to create different, different charts for that. Okay. So again, whenever you deep dive into that Helm, the complexity increases whenever the, there are multiple YAML files related to it. Okay. So the best thing about customize is what? You don't have to learn any of the, uh, uh, that templatizing thing, right? So you, whenever you are familiar with any YAML configuration, then you can just use this uh, customized one. Another one is multi uh, environments uh, deployment. Okay. So easy to deploy across multiple environments, just like, let's say you have um, stage prod or quality assurance environments, and you have to deploy the same YAML file to different, different environments. So we'll be seeing going forward, how it does look like. Okay. Then uh, it provides easy patching for entire file and specific resources. Let's say in Kubernetes, uh, you have uh, some labels. Okay. Let's say um, a common label is assigned, let's say, uh, app is equals to nginx okay and you have to change that uh, label onto the per environment basis you you want your uh, tag should be changed whenever you deploy onto the your prod environment the app the tag should be app is equals to prod whenever you deploy on the staging environment the app should be stage okay so 
again you you just increasing you just you just go on increasing the tags you can just increasing the replicas you want uh, your replicas is equals to two in dev in prod you want you want eight in stage you want five so again patching kind of thing right so you have written a template and you you, you just have to patch that entire deployment that is the main thing that customize saw here okay so it is easy for patching an entire file for specific resources that is also easily integrated with kubectl so you don't have to depend on any other third party tools as helm gives us to to use helm you have to know helm first you know how you you want to know how the values.yaml looks like what structure does fit in inside that right so whenever you learn customize you don't have to learn any values.yaml or you don't have to learn any structure okay so that is the main thing here untemplatize everything okay so it is easily integrated with kubectl okay have support for cloud builders in gcp whenever you go for any cicd kind of thing for cloud build you have a support for cloud builders that is customized okay you can use different different versions and also for anthos configuration management so again this is a multi cloud setup so you can also use you can also harness the uh, customized use cases into anthos then it is easy for uh, rendering across CI/CD environment just like GitHub Actions, GitLab CI/CD, Cloud Build CI/CD, Argo CD, Flux CD. So it has been used mostly in CI/CD platforms nowadays. Okay. So yeah, the first thing how we install the customize. Okay. So you know uh, to install customize uh, as uh, in let's say you are using a Mac, so you can just you brave install customize. Your whole uh, bunch of libraries will get installed. You are using any Ubuntu kind of system, you can go with this first command itself. This is this one, curl, curl hyphen s. You can just do this and then just do brave install customize. Okay. Then let's coming to the use cases of customize. Okay. So, as already said, that it has been used for multi environment cloud deployment setup. So, the first thing you can see here the base. Okay. So, in the base, basically, we'll be keeping our common configuration files. Let's say API deployment.yaml is a common file. Okay. Common um, means in the sense, let's say you have a template, let's say you have a template defined in which you will be reusing that template again and again. Okay. So you can just refer, refer this QA staging. You just have patch. Let's say in QA we want replicas is equals to two. But uh, the logic of that creating the replica is defined here. So the uh, customize.yaml will go here. You will grab all the values and it, it will create the deployment. Again, in the case of dev, let's say you want a patch of, let's say you want in dev, f is equals to dev. Okay. So your, you will be tagging your app as is equals to dev in the dev environment. Just like prod, you will be um, calling prod is equals to, let's say app is equals to prod, right? Again, you have to, you, again, you are doing an extra deployment on the top of API deployment. That is a Redis deployment. Okay. So this is just the same thing. Okay. So you, you, you have defined your common uh, file here, but you are changing on the per environment basis. See, QA, dev, stage, prod. Okay, so it is used for multi uh, environment setup. So base is common files and overlays means environment specific configurations. Okay, yeah. So the use case number two that is uh, you're having uh, let's say uh, your deployment and let's say you are adding a config maps. Okay, so you have to let's say you have to manually type kubectl rollout restart whenever your uh, deployments have changed in config config map site. So with customize, you are getting an extra visibility over it. So let's say whenever a new value is changed inside your config map, your um, without config without uh, customize what it was before that. Whenever you have to just change your values in config map, then you have to roll out restart right. Whenever you you have changed anything in config map, you have to just manually go and do kubectl rollout restart right to your deployment. So. With customize, we get an extra facility on the random hash value, basically. So basically it creates an hash and it just keep on upgrading it rather than restarting your pods or any deployments. Okay. So whenever a new, uh, whenever you have to update any config map, you just have, you just change your config map and just do cube, cube, apply hyphen K dot. Okay. So again, your config map will be changed, but your pod will not be restarted. So it is good for production use cases. Okay. So it uh, basically it appends the random hash value, which automatically updates config maps and new pods. Uh, actually, it gets created automatically. Okay. And then use case number three, it is a patching kind of thing. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, there are two patches here: JSON six nine zero two patch and uh, strategic merge patch. Okay. So what exactly it does? Okay. So basically, can you see this JSON six nine zero two patch, right? So here, 
uh, you are having a deployment here you are having an nginx web deployment and you are saying that let's say i'm having a common value in which uh, all the things are already defined but on the per environment basis i want to add or remove or replace my uh, replica let's say in qa let's say you have already five deployment you have to remove that deployment right so you will be having a patch kind of thing basically you will be just removing your deployment from five to two okay so instead of going and manually deploying that yaml file you will be having a patch kind of thing which will be will be uh, coming forward you will be give, uh, you will be giving this patching kind of thing okay so again there is a strategic merge merge patch this syntax is a bit different from this one because as you can see this is really straightforward you know if you know kubernetes you will be seeing api version kind metadata pack these are the uh, three these are the common file common uh, syntax of the yaml file so let's say you have to change only the replicas from in the prod environment you have 20 20 replicas let's say or let's say three replicas you want in prod okay so what you will be doing in the prod folder you will you will go you will be going and you will be just writing this command just just this syntax will be enough okay in the customization.yaml file okay so with the help of this you can just take a better picture okay so basically suppose you want to change the replica from one to two you need to add a common notation or let's say you have to add common labels also okay on the per environment basis with the help of customize you can just do that okay so use case number five that is integrating your cloud build with customize for multi-cluster deployment let's say you are you are having different different uh, clusters in different different projects okay so um, as you can see from the screen this is the first step and this is the another step okay. step in means let's say this is the first cluster and this is the second cluster okay i want to basically I, let's say there's no deployment as of now i just want to deploy my namespace after deployment in my namespace i'll be deploying deployment.yaml service.yaml and everything okay hmm? after deploying these things i want uh, whenever my cloud uh, build trigger uh, will be run right whenever that trigger will run this automatically the step will be followed okay so let's say uh, customize uh, my configurations are defined in this particular folder so it will be creating that output in this and after creating after redirecting this you will be manual will be doing this kubectl apply hyphen f this one so again you can you can just do with the help of this things okay basically this is the output and this output will be rendered here after rendered you your kubernetes app, uh, file will be applied okay so this was the use case number four Coming to the use case number five, so customize is used in GitOps. So for entering Kubernetes manifest to SCD out, for example, this is being used in Argo CD, Flux CD, Google Cloud Deploy, and those configuration management, everything. So as your Git repository or any repository is treated as single source of truth here. Okay. So basically your configuration policy is applied here and it is deployed to multiple clusters and multiple GCP resources. So let's talk about the Helm and customize now. Okay. So as you can see from the difference from the screen, that Helm requires a templating. Okay. So it requires a chart.yaml chart, Helm chart, chart you have to create, and values.yaml is needed. Okay. But in customize, there is no templating as of now. You, you just have to learn cube CTL commands, and that that is enough for you. And just patching kind of thing, just similar syntax, just your YAML file has. Okay. Overlays here there is no concept of overlays. You have to multiple uh, uh, you have to just uh, follow the repeat repeat principle here but in customize you have an overlays concept you can just divide your environment on the uh, folder basis just like stage prod and dev okay so with the help of overlays you can just uh, achieve that thing okay packaging in helm basically your packages are there right packaging helm basically whenever you do helm right there's no packaging involved but in customize there's no as such of now okay so it is again good Validation hooks, so again, Helm just support that. It is a great advantage of validation hooks, but customize doesn't support that. Rollbacks, yeah. Rollbacks, I agree that Helm having a good rollback, let's say you have to switch to a previous version, let's say V2 from V2 to V1, so you can do the rollback, but as, as such thing is not in customize, but uh, see, the customize and Helm goes hand in hand. You can use customize with Helm also. It is not a completely different tool as you, you, you just uh, think that customize and hand can be used um, in hand in hand. Let's say um, you have organized your helm charts with customize, okay, and you have to just do the deployment with customize. So again, these things can be 
uh, integrated together okay in any cloud platforms okay and also native kids integrations is no in helm but yeah it have some kids integration just like kubectl it have right so you don't have to install any third party agents or something it is go it is it is just going good with kids integration okay also um, in helm you will be seeing the most imperative nature here but in customize it is having a declarative uh, approach visibility and transparency i agree uh, in helm that it is really really complex whenever a new base coming to helm uh, to get rid of those template kind of thing we will be uh, arranging customized to do that stuff okay so visibility and transparency easy to use are the great features of helm and customize again helm is having its pros and cons so helm offers many features that go beyond simple app deployment okay this packaging hooks rollbacks okay it simplifies app installation by allowing users to set default that can further configure with values if necessary and as you can see from the skin helm is well known to developers it has many users it is having a great online support but customize is lagging in that so again it is improving day by day so yeah most commonly used application have their helm charts available online let's say you have to deploy an nginx in controller okay so you you will be having already predefined things in helm charts available already it's available let's say you have to deploy any any charts right so again it is having a good online support it's just save your time and coming to the cons actually it is having some more complex structure as compared to customize because you have to learn some templating kind of thing here you know the more abstraction layers are there it is having a <clears throat> more error prone templates if you are having more let's say your yaml file number of yaml file increases in the future so you have to uh, uh, comment how it, the structure looks like right so again whenever a new yaml file gets into your added into your chart dot thing then basically again the complexity increases there okay then charts still require runtime customization making them difficult to manage the ci cd pipeline okay and also actually it uh, the uh, transparency has been lagged here also the visibility so in customize it is been taken care of that transparency or whatever okay let's start about customize uh, pros and cons so in customize as we already know it is simple to use it is having a declarative syntax also aligning with the kubernetes philosophy uh, you don't have to learn any third party uh, tools just like uh, the helm thing okay so again it supports an inherit based uh, model as we will be seeing uh, in the upcoming uh, demo that uh, we will be having some bases and some overlays so what is base and overlays uh, basically base is uh, used for your common files to keep your common files and uh, overlays are used for keeping your the, the files which will be changing frequently on your per environment basis okay. and uh, customize support the inherit base model uh, which makes it uh, scale better than helm because in helm again you have to let's say you have to deploy a helm chart right and you have to create your own helm chart okay in which there will be a different different environments okay so in that you have to repeat that code for your own environment basis but this is not the case with uh, customize you just define all the common uh, yaml files or manifest in your base folder and in your common uh, in your overlays folder you will be defining your yaml file which will be changing actually let's say replica is changing the labels are changing prefixes are changing suffixes are changing right so you can just define that okay also using the native version integrated with kubectl again we have command called kubectl apply hyphen k dot which builds actually the customization.yaml files okay and don't have to learn any any third party tools the only customize uh, build dot or kubectl apply hyphen k will be enough okay it makes it easier to use off the shelf app so you can integrate with any any um, application going forward okay so basically let's say cloud builders or anything okay also it uses only plain yaml file structure so basically it is having two kind of patches as we have already see, so saw that 6902 patch and strategic merge path in 6902 it is just like an imperative syntax and in basically your strategic merge file it is just your common yaml file okay as talking about the customized cons basically customized doesn't offer many features as helm does just like uh, the helm just supports the uh, it is having a good online support right let's say you have to download your chart in one go you can download right 
but it, it is just like a packaging kind of thing right but customize is not a packaging kind of thing basically you don't uh, get any charts or something like that but in customize it uh, it, it is just like a plain yaml file structure okay then it is not designed to follow the dry do, do not receive do not do not repeat yourself principle basically uh, it is uh, basically in uh, helm we have to just repeat uh, on the yaml files on the per environment basis we have to just change the values right so in the in this case this is not the scenario just define your files in the common and base overlays folder and just it will just do your job okay. then the only hectic is that user must manually declare the resources and patches in the customization dot yaml file and then the file must be manually uploaded whenever the new file is added okay. also the native version embedded in kubectl is much older than the current standalone version as we will be seeing that v1 beta 1 is now um, trending so and going forward while the improvements are done maybe they have rolled out to v1 or v2 or something like that okay. then online support for customize is difficult to find yes i agree with that because it's again in the r&d phase and again the new things are getting developed here so that's it yeah so this was all about uh, customize uh, and help okay so now how to start with customize okay so whenever you are starting with uh, cubes customize learning right where you have to actually get started so you have to install the customize either you will be having some client libraries with you let's say on ubuntu system or windows or anything you, you are having just client libraries on your documentation you just download that if you are in mac you are having, having some uh, packages or just like chocolatey or brew you just do brew install customize and your whole customize will be built up right then prepare your manifest file after customize has been installed in your pc you will be having you have to you have to create your manifest file so basically this is the prerequisite only okay so prepare your manifest files accordingly and then divide your manifest file let's say you are having some common files in which your template is in the structure in such a way that these are the environment variables which you will be using these are the secrets that we will be defining these are the ingresses that we will be creating we know that what let's say this is a many certificate one let's say we have such common common scenarios in place in which we know that these are the particularly file which will be not be changing right okay so that files will not be changing we will be keeping that files into basis folder and that files will be changing very frequently right so we'll be keeping that uh, files and uh, yaml files in the overlays folder okay so for more resource we will be getting an idea on uh, customized documentation i will be showing you okay so yeah so let's go to the customized documentation now uh, after that we can just do your demo okay so yeah so basically this is the uh, github repository link you can follow all the examples that i will be demonstrating in this example will be available in this github repository so you will be taking step by step documentation approach will be following okay and uh, th there are eight examples in this and if you want to practice any of the examples you just close the repository in every folder there are eight folders so in every folder there is a readme file in which all the steps are mentioned step by step you have to follow okay so you can just practice all that okay so yeah so let's start with the uh, customized documentation so as you can see here right so basically in the customization dot uh, customize uh, yaml files you can see uh, the, the website is customize dot io okay so whenever we go to the customize dot io we'll be uh, going to see how to install the customize how to use it with the cube ctl okay so you can see the standard structure right this is the deployment this is v1 beta 2 then this is the patches we'll be applying on the per environment basis this is the customization dot yaml file we'll be creating this is the basis and patches included okay so as you can see from the definition itself that uh, it is a kubernetes configuration management customize introduces a template free way as we have already discussed right we will be creating uh, untemplatizing everything okay so we'll be uh, we'll be integrating with the help of kubectl instead of using kubectl apply hyphen f manifest file folders every time we have a st uh, standard structure here that is apply hyphen k so hyphen f is replaced by our hyphen k okay this is the actually the one thing so yeah as you can see this is a purely declarative approach okay then natively built into kubectl now that this is you can just take all the features okay we are having some more uh, use cases or it examples are also there you can just take a look over the documentation also there are good videos to get started with and also it supports with multiple um, um cicd platform just like plug cd argo cd loopstack pods etc okay. also it can, it can be really integrated with cloud build so I have an example in which I have integrated this with Cloud Build as a native tool for GCP. So 
we'll be uh, taking a look over it. Okay. So to install the customize, whenever you click on this uh, this link, okay. So then you will be going ahead to see how to install the customize. Okay? You will be having some binaries, Docker images, Homebrew, Mac port, chocolate tea, okay. So when you click on binary, if you are in Linux machines, let's like Ubuntu, right? So you can just grab this and just uh, curl this and just you can install this, right? After this is done, if you are in Mac, that's just one command, yes, you know, brew install homebrew or yeah, brew install customize. And then within one command, you can just uh, you know, you know, start with customization, okay? Then after doing this, just go back to this sig.cli. It has some uh, good uh, documentation for kubectl and customize. Just click on get started. As we'll be seeing, there are different different environments here, staging, prod, dev, right? And each environment has, is having patches. We don't have any YAML files here, right? Only we can see patches.yaml. And again, one more thing, uh, customization.yaml file is located inside each directory so that it, it, it knows to keep an eye of this particular thing. Okay. And after this is done, you can just uh, click on get started and you'll be having some configuration management. You can just see the examples over here. Okay. There's multi-base. Okay. So yeah, this is standard structure. Basically, this is the standard structure we'll be following. So just to give you a thousand feet overview, this is the base folder in which all your common file will be residing. In the uh, documentation, it has uh, taken an example of pod. See, Nginx uh, uh, is there. In dev, again, we don't have anything. So whenever we deploy in the dev environment, right? So basically, your uh, whenever a new deployment is deployed, it will start from dev. In stage, whenever a new deployment is deployed, it will start from stage. Again, the similar structure for a for prod as well. Okay. So how it will know that which YAML file it should pick up, right? With the help of this dot dot, as you can see, right? This is the dot dot base, dot dot base, dot dot. It, it is saying just go to directory back and grab all the resources which is mentioned in this base folder. So again, it will be pick up in this. After pick up in this, it will append. The, it will just append in the beginning that uh, prepend in the beginning the dev stage and plot according to the environment. Okay. This is the, the basic, basic example, very basic example. Just like after that, you have to just patch, provide a patch. Let's say you have to just change the uh, image from Nginx to the Nginx latest, or let's say you have to change arguments also, right? So you can do with the help of this uh, particular things. Okay. So this was the basic example of uh, customize. Okay. Let's start with the actual implementation of the customer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the demo. So as we can see, there are many files here. Okay. No, so let me clear it first. Okay, so we'll be starting with the first example. There are eight examples here in which I have covered the real world use cases for customize. Okay, so as we can see in the first example, this is a very straightforward example. I'll be opening a uh, readme. Okay. In the readme, actually, I have uh, basically uh, written that uh, what is customized, why customize is used, right? After that, basically, mm, I have also um, uh, took a real world use case of customization.yaml file, how the customization.yaml files look like, right? Add this file inside name and type the command. So, as you can see, we'll be going slowly, slowly. First, uh, let's say we will be uh, installing customize. So I'm in Mac, so I'll be just doing brew install customize. Okay, as I've already installed customize in my case, so it will show that it will just update some packages or something. Okay. So yeah, with the help of this, you can just install the customize. Okay, it will showing customize. It, will, it is just downloading customize. Okay. This is updating the version. Actually, I was having 5.0.2, so it it has just upgraded from 5.0.2 to 5.0.3. So this is the basically the first step to install your customize in your local machine or any based on host. Okay. After installing the customize, basically you will be having some syntax. Okay. So you have to build your YAML files actually. Okay. So uh, first and second step is to prepare your YAML files. Okay. So we will go into K8 manifest. We have Apache and Nginx in place in which uh, you have in Apache. We do have our Apache deployments and Apache service. Also in Nginx, we have our Nginx deployment and Nginx service. Okay, this is done. After preparing your YAML files and structuring into each folder, we have to basically uh, create a customization.yaml files also. As you can see from the screen, this is the customization.yaml file. 
if you are aware of your yaml file how it just look like in kubernetes we do have the kind just let's say uh, if you have to deploy pods so kind will be pods if you have to deploy de deployments your kind will be deployments if you have to deploy some ingress so it will be again ingress so again if you have to deploy a customization you have to the, you have to include the kind as customization okay the namespace in which all the resources will be created let's say in my apache there is no namespace mentioned for example i have included my namespace in this case as of now so it will just create your application inside your namespaces so let's say if if, if you if by mistake you doesn't uh, included namespace spare definition over here but you have included namespace definition here so what it will do after, uh, whenever it is trying to build that particular uh, deployments okay whenever it will start deploying that deployments it will just uh, uh, deploy that deployments into a specific namespace which is mentioned in the customization so basically what this resource is means right so this is pretty much clear this api version see v1 beta 1 as of now it is having but going forward it can just go to v2 or v1 as depending upon the releases that customized developers will make okay then the um, the resources resources means which what basically it will keep an eye on the specific resources okay so instead of so what was the traditional uh, deployment strategy let's say we are uh, here okay let's say uh, let's see if there's any any i have actually created one cluster and i have connected with it i will just do kubectl get pods and i am having a namespace called sankit so let's say if there is any pod so as of now there is no pods in my sankit namespace okay so what i will be doing uh, let's let's imagine we don't have customized in place so how we'll be doing that deployments let's say you have to deploy this particular files and this particular files you will be going and deploying kubectl apply hyphen f uh, your apache deployment.yaml and apache service.yaml in this case right whenever you just do this you just um, basically just deploy this particular things right so see the deployment is created kubectl get pods hyphen and sunkit i'll be seeing my pods ready with it right if you want to delete it again instead of uh, just uh, just click delete then your things will be deleted right again we don't have any pods as of now but what if your number of yaml file increases uh, uh, this this yaml files are in different uh, different different uh, namespaces or separate separate uh, they are having separate separate folders separate separate environments right so in that case basically customization is having a good over good age over it okay so basically you will be defining all the resources here uh, as say, as such apache is a particular folder name and in apache we have a apache deployment.yaml file this is the apache folder and this is apache service right so we'll be having a service yaml file in this apache folder just like this we will be having engineers deployment and service in each of the particularly folder so we will tell customize yes these are the yaml file that you have to uh, build and you have to keep an eye on okay uh, so yeah this is the basically uh, the use case of the first use case of customize so how you'll be de uh, deploying the custom in the customized way okay so there are two things okay you know, whenever you go to the readme okay you'll be having two you will be having two methods to build that customization either we can use customize build dot so what happened when we do customize build dot i will just uh, build that image so it, it will take all the yaml files okay so it see the, it has uh, to the error and it is saying unable to find one of the customization dot yaml customization dot yaml and customization in the directory right so it, it means that we are not in the current directory in which customization dot yaml is present right so we'll be doing ls it is not we will we'll, we'll, we are in the wrong folder we will just go one directory back and we will be building that particularly customization dot yaml in which we will be building that directory in which your customization dot yaml file resides okay just do customize build dot again customize build dot see again all the yaml file it, 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 it took the blueprint of it it actually it, it, it hasn't, hasn't deployed as of now it has just taken a dry run it has just performed a dry run after um, creating a dry run and it is giving an output to the console we will be directing that particular thing to kubectl apply hyphen f slash slash or something let's take the syntax also all the syntax yeah i was correct slash so as soon as you do do, uh, do this you are uh, automatically the deployment services whatever mentioned in this yaml file it gets applied see let's see if uh, the pods and all the things are created in my namespaces yeah as we can see 
10 seconds ago we have created the pods and deployments and whatever let's see kubectl service also as we see and okay. service is also deployed okay now let's say you have did this right now you have to delete also just just do delete let's see if it does or not yeah. it started deleting right this is the first way in which you can use customize okay what is another way the other way is kubectl apply hyphen k dot slash okay so let's do that also okay we will uh, come the one directly back kubectl okay. apply hyphen k dot dot means what wherever the customization dot yaml file is present there and whenever you build this whatever the yaml file which is mentioned in the customization dot yaml file it will just build that okay let's see we started building service is created deployment is created Let's see if it's already created or not. Let's see if we'll get pods. And click. Yeah. This is the very, very basic example of using customize. Okay. In which we have just saw K8 manifest was there. Just readme files were there. Okay. So I, I just took the one example and also I have just redirected output here also. Okay. So let's say we have did this, right? We have built it, we have created our manifest files, whatever. How, what if we have to delete this? Just instead of apply just delete it okay so this is what customization offers you okay so this is a very very basic example in which let's say you have a hundred of yaml files in different different folders and you have to give that same yaml files to your friend also different different friends so it is very feasible to do that stuff rather than going into each folder and just do apply kubectl apply hyphen f slash kubectl apply hyphen slash so instead of removing the toil every time you just do this customization okay and then there is k8 manifest uh, uh, folder in the example 2 in which basically we have example to readme.md file okay in which basically uh, possibility of the scalability let's say if if there is no yaml file increase right so customization will become more complex and tedious to manage one customization.yaml will not be effective in the scenario right we have to add customization.yaml in sub directories also let's say your uh, number of yaml file increase in the future okay now well, the uh, what uh, what ideal use case was there that uh, you have to just uh, include all the 100 yaml files there, here right but this is not the possible scenario that we will be looking for we will be scaling that solution right so how we will be scaling that solution we will scaling that solution in such a way that we will be creating customization.yaml in each directory so let's say there are 20 directories okay let's say as of now we are having three directories right so we will be keeping customization dot yaml in uh, each of the directories and uh, we will tell us hey customize just uh, just uh, take single source of truth this uh, truth to this uh, uh, deployment and service and just keep an eye of this particular repository okay it, uh, so this customization dot yaml it will keep an eye on the apache deployment and apache service similarly this customization dot yaml will be keep an eye on hwdp dot yaml and hwsvc dot yaml similarly this way after this is done this uh, after this is done we will be having three folders in which customize is already present now we will be passing apache hello world and nginx inside this not will not be treating as a files uh, going forward we will be um, be applying customization on specific folder level okay in the particular first example what we have we saw that we have applied on the particularly file structure right but now going forward let's say your yaml file increases right you will be having thousands of yaml file in such scenarios in which you will be having multi deployment strategies multi clouds environments right so what we will be doing in that case we will not even define entire yaml files in customization.yaml right so to use that basically we will be doing a folder level hierarchy okay so we'll be defining such folders in which we will be keeping customization and for dot yaml in each of the directories and then we will be passing whole customization.yaml in a specific folder so as we can see, whenever I do this, whenever I come to this, so uh, as we can see, I have also included one example in which Apache, Hello World, and Nginx customization.yaml file is present. Again, the same thing that we have uh, did. So this was all about file, and this was all about folder. So let's build it. Okay. Let's see if we have any pods running or not in my namespace. There is no such thing, such thing right? So let's do. Let's do CTL. 
apply hyphen k dot okay so as we do this services created services created nginx services created apache deployment whatever it is mentioned in this now all the things are created three service three deployments okay so let's see if it's created okay pods hyphen as and k yeah so we will see the service Now let's delete it. How it is? How easy it is? How to delete your, your infrastructure in one go and just create it in one go, right? So it is good to create that. So uh, just similarly, we will be taking a look over some more example. Just like we have to add the labels, right, to each of the repository. Let's say you know, we are having uh, Apache deployment, Apache service customization, namespace, right? So let's say uh, we don't have any, um, let's say for in Apache uh, deployment, we just have a standard shutterized approach that is Apache deployment. In service also HTTPD service. In customization.yaml, what it will do, it will append the WB SRV um, uh, as a part of deployment and service and namespace also. Let's let's deploy this, okay. I'm just, uh, um, let's also, uh, we'll take a new example. Just like HW, HW deployment is there, HW service is there, customization.yaml, it says that it says that it will deploy it in the HW namespace. Okay. Similarly, it will create first namespace. After creating namespace, it will deploy into the HW namespace. Similarly, Nginx, it will create an Nginx namespace. After creating Nginx namespace, it will deploy into this Nginx namespace too. Okay. Then uh, yeah. So after doing, after uh, just hierarching the customization.yaml in Apache, Hello World and Nginx, we'll be having uh, the same similarly structure over here. So let's take an example of Apache as of now. Now we will not be building the three repositories all together. Just for uh, example, we'll be just uh, building the Apache one. Okay. So yeah, we'll now carefully look, look, look at this. Whenever we uh, apply this Apache deployment, right? So Whenever we do kubectl apply hyphen f apache dpl dot yaml, so what will be the name of the Apache deployment, right? So this this will be the name of the Apache deployment, the Apache deployment only as Apache deployment. Okay. What if we want to change the uh, deployment, right? Will be will be uh, will be not it will not be touching or any editing any yaml files by going into yaml files. We just have customize in place that will do the job for us. That it will just add a suffix wbsrv. Let's let's see. Okay. And we'll also append the common labels also Apache Web Server because common labels are Apache as of now. So you can also append this. Okay. So let's build this. Okay. Customize kubectl apply hyphen k dot. Let's see. First, it will create a namespace called Apache. Let's see if it, it, if it, is, if it has created. We'll get ns Apache. Yeah, it is uh, saying that it is active. So yeah, it has created the Apache. So it, I think it, the Apache name is already present. So uh, it has not changed anything. Also the Apache service was also present. So it has changed nothing. So let's delete it first. Let's see. It's deleting. Now let's try it again. It's saying that namespace is created now, service is also created, Apache is also created. So let's see, kubectl get ns Apache. Now we can see 11 seconds ago Apache deployment was created. Also we can see the pods too. So we will get pods in Apache namespace. Yeah, 19 seconds ago. Also we can see the service too. Now, now carefully observe the pattern. What, what 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 was the name of the Apache deployment? Apache deployment. What it uh, custom, what customized did? It has uh, added the suffix hyphen w hyphen src. So whatever the resource it is it is keeping an eye on, it has added that Apache deployment service. Okay, you can see the deployment also. Right. So that was the whole idea about this particularly things. We can also describe this particularly deployment, which it will describe deploy. 
Oh. Is it quite service as of now, as you see? Party name space. Party. As we can see, what is the label? Apache Web Server, right? So customize added this Apache Web Server, okay? It was added by Apache. It was added by this uh, customized. Okay. Also, WB SRV added by SRV. So we have so we saw three examples. First example was what using a customize in the file hierarchy manner. Second example was all about folder level. Third example was adding the labels to existing deployments, right? Now I'll be seeing fourth example called patches. Okay. So as we already saw, there were there are two kinds of patches, right? Here first, let let delete the thing that we have created. So as we saw that there are two patches. The first example is six nine zero two patch. Another example is strategic merge path. Okay. So what uh, basically it means? So let's say we have our nginx deployment dot yaml. And we want to basically uh, in the deployment the replica is one. Okay, let's say there is a uh, requirement in which we have to change the replicas. Okay, normally what we do go let's go log into the cluster, just kubectl edit deployment, just change the replica count from one to two or five. Okay, but what if we want to uh, do with the help of customize? Okay, so just go here, just as the patch. What you have to do actually, let's say you have to replace the spec uh, in the replica. Okay, so what the what the path means? Okay, what is this replica? This is the replace method. Okay, let's say you have to also replace the uh, tag from 1.0 to 1.0.2. Okay, also you have to change the replicas from 1 to 5. Okay, what you will be doing in that case? Spec replicas. So what this actually means, right? Let's say I will just give you a heads up that you'll be going into spec. You'll be going to replica. Replica. It's just a relative kind of path. It is saying that go into this, go into this, and change the whatever. Okay. Again, if you have change the labels also, what you have to do? Go into spec, go into selectors, go into match labels, go into app, and just change the labels. Okay. That's it. That's that's how the customize works. You have to add the value also in the case. Let's say you have deployed something and you have to add the labels, right? So you can do with the help of customize. So let's add the patches. Okay, let's say uh, what is the namespace? Let's let's see if we do have any pods or something running in my namespace. We don't have we don't have anything, right? So let's build the customize. Kubectl. Deployment is created. Let's see. Five number of pods are created. Five replicas are created. See, right. so you will CTL get pods also. Let's see the age of the pods. It just created now, right? Five pods are running. Okay, that's how basically you uh, customize one. Okay, five, three, also change changing the tags. Okay, so that was a basic example of. Uh, uh, customize okay let's delete whatever we have created okay. now we'll be seeing the separate file path that is that it was this example was related to your uh, 6902 patch what it states that uh, basically it is having a target in which you have to keep an eye on so basically the target is nginx app deployment okay so where this is mentioned this is mentioned here nginx app deployment right then we have to what we have to do we have to add a patch okay this is the syntax of patch adding the patch Target means what? 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 Uh, basically, in which resource you have to target? Deployment you have to target, right? Let's say in in the same deployment file, different targets are there. Okay. Let's say in one deployment file, different different deployments are present. They are separated by slash slash dash dash dash, right? In that case, we can also add tags also. See, this is the list format, right? You can as you can add as as much as tag you want or something, right? So, it is a good uh, methodology to do that. After that, you will be having a separate file.yaml in which uh, basically hmm, you will be having a deployment, same, okay. But here the things are changed. The, the, in the in uh, inline yaml, what we have 
we are deploying the customization.yaml uh, we are deploying the patches inside this particularly uh, file right customization but here we have a separate thing we first we will create a simple patch it is just a, like a normal if you know your normal deployment you can just get and click a look over it what we are saying that you just have to change the uh, label from something to apache okay and we will be passing this deployment here see this deployment is same up till here all the things are same but the path path we will be saying that just pick up the pick up this label dot patch and just apply this patch okay instead of defining all things here we are just having an additional thing that it we will create a yaml file and we will be defining a patch that we want to actually apply on okay so what it will do it will go and it will just see what are the replicas here there is one replica okay what it will do it will just do four replicas and on the uh, label apache okay we'll just try this also okay you ctl apply hyphen p dot see the you ctl get ports okay see there are four apache deployments uh, uh, four apache ports created on the selector apache right so previous one it was only one right so we do if, if we don't declare the aspects as replicas one here it just treat as a by default one only okay just to just to give a heads up okay so yeah it was an example of applying a patch okay so just do delete after that we will come to our example of kx that is base and overlays it is a very very famous example and this is the example which has been very very used in industry okay so as we'll be using api deployment we have we'll be keeping a common structure let's let's say this is the replica one and i know my deployment name will be start from we'll be starting from api deployment also i'm i'm having a container nginx associated with it also i'm having, I'm having some environments right and this environment can be changed on the per environment basis also right i do have config map dot yaml in place okay in which my configuration will be deployed okay we do have customize in place in which it will say that yeah whenever you deploy these things the deployment will start from base okay and then mongo deployment is also there okay so basically this is the uh, what i can say this is the basically mongo deployment and uh, this is the username and password associated with it and it is referencing the config map and secrets all together okay. as of now we will be taking a config map example okay then overlays overlays means what the things will be changing let's say we will be applying a patch api patch.yaml in will udb username it will having a dev environment right in prod again same thing we will be having uh, api patches as api and the image is meme cache okay so the deployment nginx will be replaced by um, meme cache meme cache or redis in place meme cache yeah meme cache meme cache in the prod environment also on the top of it we are also applying a redis configuration in prod environment okay also in qa we are having customization.yaml in which we are having a patch called uh, busybox okay and for staging environment we do have the customized patch in which the config map and your customization.yaml is mentioned okay so what it does actually let's say i'm deploying a production environment okay i'm just going and create a terminal i'll be having a customization.yaml so i'll give just you will be uh, just you just to give you a heads up of base okay so what it will be doing it will be going two directories back into our base folder that is this one it will be it will be pick up all the yaml files it will be building that okay first after building that it will be having uh, the redis deployment in place so we are in prod right so we'll be having redis deployment is also deployed after that api patch is also deployed but uh, uh, of, before deploying this api okay it will deploy it will just replace your nginx image with um, meme cached okay so i will show you okay. let's go here we are in prod okay uh, so yeah, we are in prod so now 
whenever we do customize build dot or let's say kubectl apply hyphen k the first step is what the first step is going into base directories here okay after going this it will be uh, changing the image from nginx to uh, what was the patch here meme cache okay let's see let's do customize build dot to see the changes okay this one cannot unmarshal string okay okay patches means yeah let's let's do cube cpn apply hyphen k dot let's see oh uh, no matches in api deployment okay There's some issues with that uh, api patch dot yaml Okay. No, she's, let's let's try with dev environment. Okay. Uh, think issue. We check afterwards. Yes. Customize build dot. So dot dot slash dot dot slash base. Yeah. Okay. Config map, all things are visible here. So, Apache patch dot yaml, cube ctl, apply, hyphen k. Yeah. As we can see, config maps, deployments, and base MongoDB is created. So, what it does actually, it will be going into base. We will pick up in that and we will be applying patch okay, from this one. Okay. It will be having a dev environment kind of thing. So let's do kubectl get pods. Get pods. As we can see, all the uh, things are appended starting from base, right? Base API deployment is done. Base API deployment is done, right? All the things are done in place. Okay. Just 23 seconds ago. And it will be having uh, env kind of tag let's see let's log in into one of the pods qctl describe pod yeah so let's see the name okay. yeah as you can see the environment is set db environment okay. also it has having a password associated with it and then it has some tokens also ip has changed the namespace is deployed in some case yeah it's correct component is api and the thing i want to show you that this is the one that uh, we can see right the components is api and env is the api see this is the basically uh, the env is api here okay env is api env is dev and component is api so this is the actually the thing that uh, basically we can just get rid of so yeah, so I will just jump here. Okay. This is the ex example of your API patch dot yaml. Okay. Yeah. So okay. let's delete it. Whatever we have created so far. Okay, good. Now I'll be showing you a example of config map. Okay, so basically, as we can see, we are having a deployment. Okay, we are having a deployment in it, which is deployed in the my Sunkin namespace. It is having a replica one. We are having two things here: uh, config map and secrets. Okay, so in config map, we have HTTP port and HTTPS port mentioned. Okay, and uh, we have secrets also in which my password is mentioned. Okay. So in the customization.yaml, what we are actually defining, we are not creating a separate uh, kind which is config map, okay, or secret, okay, just a single resource kind of thing. We are defining the same thing in config map. So the problem was that uh, whenever we change anything in config map, right, we have to manually go to the deployment and just do kubectl rollout restart command, right. So to get rid of that command, what we what 
I have uh, seen in the customize that there is a config map generator in which uh, you just define your all the things which is related to your config map and you have to let's say in future you have to just change the values from port 80 to 81 or let's say HTTPS from from 8443 to 443 okay so in that case basically you will be having some scenarios okay so ra rather than manually going and just do kubectl rollout restart every time okay so you you just go and uh, you just uh, do kubectl uh, apply hyphen k right uh, automatically your config map will be created automatically that config map will be mounted to your deployment and automatically the uh, pods will be restarted so how amazing it feels right okay so let's do that thing okay i'll be going into this directory okay so let's do kubectl get config map cm in my namespace okay let's see if there is anything okay this is the by default config map which, which gets created now let's deploy our own thing okay. i'm going into integrated terminal okay i will just do cubes customize apply hyphen k dot sorry not customize it is cube cpl it started creating config map secrets it was already created somewhere so i think we will just destroy everything and just recreate it once again. It's related. Let's recreate it. Okay. As you can see, config map is created, secret is created, and deployment is created. Okay. Let's see it. Look, CTL. Get deployment. Deploy. Hyphen end. Okay. Apache deployment is created 12 seconds ago. So now we will be going to CTL get pods okay. Let's log into this pod with CTL. Set FNIT or FN make it dash. Okay. Now let's do ENV. As we can see, right? So what 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 were the environment we was we were having? We are having HTTP port. Okay, we will see we will be seeing the HTTP port. Can you see this HTTP port 80? Okay. So basically, this is the HTTP port 80. Let me zoom in. Okay. So as you can see, HTTP port 80. Okay. Also, uh, what was the uh, another? Uh, let me just lower it down. Yeah. What was another one? Password, right? So. Yeah, my password is Sanket123. Gets created. Where we define that? We just define here. Right? Password, secret generator. You can see all the things right here. HTTP port. HTTPS port is also there. No? So let's see what the HTTPS port. HTTPS port. HTTPS. HTTP port is there. HTTPS. My password is there. HTTPS port is 8443. Okay. So let's try to change the port from 8443 to uh, let's say uh, 443 okay let's try to do that i will just come out of this part okay. i will just do kubectl apply hyphen k okay. as you will be saying in the output it is new config map is created secret is unchanged because we haven't touched to secrets okay deployment is configured means it has rolled out a new pod let's see if new pod is created or not so you will get pods hyphen n and k as we can see, the new pod is created. Let's log in into this pod. CTL. Let's write uh, set. Same command I'm just typing. I'll just replace it with the box. Let's do ENV. Let's try to search for HTTPS port. See this? HTTPS port is created. Let's exit now. So it means that it has just restarted the pod, it has mounted the pod to config map. As you click, it will get CM. You will be seeing that previously there was a config map. Again, we have rolled out a new config map. Okay. So it is a good thing that we can also roll back to uh, previous config map. So if you want to clean it, you can just clean it down. Okay. That's the major advantage of using the config map and secrets with this customized.
so it, it just uh, solved the problem also i have created a scenario in which i have created a cloud build.yaml i have integrated customized with cloud build.yaml so what i did i have created two clusters okay one 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 was for dev and one another was for prod okay in the same project it was if you want to do it for another project you can also do that just make sure that you just provide the relevant permission to your service account okay so basically what i have did see this is the directory right customize example 8 multi cluster deployment this is the directory in which overlays is there dev cluster is there similarly prod cluster is there see dev cluster and prod cluster is there each each uh, folder is having its own repositories or repositories on manifest files okay so deployment is there service is there customization is there and namespace is there okay similarly what whenever uh, there's a new uh, new code or something right and you have to just build it from scratch you know all the deployments we have just defined and rather than doing kubectl apply hyphen k every time we try to do that with the help of automated things just like cloud build we will just run cloud build trigger manually or let's say we will just uh, push we will just uh, whenever there is a push to a repository we will be trigger that cloud build.yaml pipeline right okay so this is the cloud build.yaml pipeline in which i have mentioned the zone in which my cluster resides this is the asia south one a and asia south one e in which my cluster resides also i will be doing kubectl apply hyphen f in the prod cluster and dev cluster okay so with the help of this a small there was some this is very very small automation but yeah it is a good kickstarter okay with the help of this i have achieved that i have created a cloud build trigger and i have just uh, included all the things mentioned here so this was all about customize if you have any questions please reach it down to me reach out to me or yeah you can just type your comments or anything okay so if you have any question related to customize yeah and just put it there chat thank you yeah have a great day